My dear friends in Christ, we are going to take a quick reading from Genesis chapter number 18, verse 1 to 15. And I'm reading from Good News Translation. The Lord appeared to Abraham at the sacred trees of Mame. Mm. As Abraham was sitting at the entrance of his tent during the hottest part of the day, he looked up and saw three men standing there. As soon as he saw them, he ran out to meet them. Bowing down with his face, touching the ground, he said, Sash, please, do not pass by my home without stopping. I am here to serve you. Lead, let me bring some water for you to wash your feet. You can rest here beneath this tree. I will also bring a bit of food. It will give you strength to continue your journey. You have honored me by coming to my house, so let me serve you. They replied, thank you, we accept. Abraham hurried into the tent and said to Sarah, quick, let a sack, take a sack of your best flour and bake some bread. Then he ran to the head and picked out a calf that was tender and fat, and gave it to a servant who hurried to get it ready. He took some cream, some milk, and the meat, and set the food before the man. There, under the tree, he served them himself, and they ate. Then they asked him, Where is your wife, Sarah? She is there in the tent, he, re he answered them. One of them said, Nine months from now, I will come back, and your wife Sarah will have a son. Sarah was behind them at the door of the tent, listening. Abraham and Sarah were very old. And Sarah had stopped having her monthly periods. So Sarah laughed to herself and said, <laughs> Now that I am old and worn out, can I still enjoy this? And uh, besides, my husband is old also. Then the Lord asked Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, can I really have a child when I'm old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? As I said, nine months from now, I will return and Sarah will have a son. Because Sarah was afraid, she denied it. I didn't laugh, she said. Yes, you did, he replied. You laughed. <laughs> and this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, O Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, you may be wondering why this reading tonight. Today is a special day. Today is the first day of the month of August. I mean, a lot of people may be wondering what has Brother got to tell us in this message. How does it relate to August? My dear people of God, before I answer that question, I would like to bring to your attention that Abraham entertained three men. The Bible called them three men. When Abraham was entertaining, they didn't know they were angels. Genesis chapter 18 verse 2 says, Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. So, we see in the story how 
he requested that they accept his request to entertain them. And they accepted and became his guests. So Abraham served them very well. The Bible said that they ate. So this was something very wonderful. Remember that Abraham didn't know these people. <laughs> if you ask Abraham who were those people, he would tell you there were men, three men. But later, we learn in the scripture that those three men were actually angels and the Lord. So it was the Lord and the two angels that came. But they came as human. You know. They disguised themselves. And God is still in that pattern of doing things or writing with his people to today. He will not come as God, not only his angels come with wings, but they will come in human form. Even when Jesus came to the earth, he, people didn't know he was God. If they knew he was God, they wouldn't have done to him what they did to him. They wouldn't have crucified him. They wouldn't have afflicted him. They would have caused him pain. They would have, they would have loved to worship him. <laughs> If they knew he was he was God, Pilate in John 18 verse 38 would have asked that question he asked there, what is truth? He was asking what the truth, even when the truth himself was standing before him. I am happy that Jesus didn't even answer that question. I way of telling him, look, <laughs> truth is standing before you. I am asking who is the truth. So you see God coming in human flesh. John 1 verse 14 says, and the word was made flesh. So this is this is God. This is the this is the way God is still relating with His people. He, today He will still disguise Himself in a species of bread, and that will become His body. He will hide His divinity in a wine, and that is His blood. And so, in what Abraham experienced, the, the divine. Hid their glory, their identity, their dignity in human flesh. Permit me to say that the angels took away their wings or made Abraham not to see their wings. It's still happening today. And so, since they appeared as humans, Abraham wasn't seeing God and the two angels in their glorified state. Oh my goodness. I mean, I cannot imagine how Abraham would have felt if he had seen that this was God and the other two were angels. <laughs> he wouldn't be able to stand their presence. And so, the divine mandate was for these three men to come disguised, looking like ordinary men. Ordinary men. Jesus. This is the same thing, the same paradigm that God wants to do in your life. You see, let me just share this quick story with you. I used to have a student, you know, some years ago. And uh, one day we were talking, and he told me a story that surprised me. <laughs> he said he was looking for a job. I know. And uh, he, there was an an opportunity for an interview somewhere in the city. But he didn't have money to go there. So, he ended up meeting some friends and was able to raise this money for him to go. So while he was in the bus that would take him to that place, he saw a beggar begging. And uh, from what he told me, he said that he perceived a voice that told him, give that money to the beggar. And his mind said, uh -uh. this is money I just struggled to get. I, 
I mean, this interview is very important for me. This job is very important for me. How could I just give this out? The voice came again and said, give it out. So he gave it to the beggar. And you know what? He didn't even have money again for, because he knew that he would eat money hard. It wouldn't take him to the end of the destination. So he came out on the bus. And, you know, guess where he went to? Back to the house. He locked his door. I was praying. He said, while he was praying, there was a knock at the door. And he said he opened the door. And look at one young man, smiling, very charming smile. You know how somebody presents himself to you when the person expects you to know him very well. And uh, he, he was faking his own smile, laughing, smiling back, and the person was even gesturing to enter into the house. As far as this young man was concerned, this was a stranger. I don't know him. And this man said, man, you don't know me? He called him by his name. He called, he said, you don't know me? He said, I don't know you. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Is this not your name? He said, that's your name. Is that not your parish? He mentioned the name of the church. He said, that's my parish. Are you not in the choir? He said, I'm in the choir. Is this person not the head of the choir? He said, yeah, that is the name of the choir. And he said, you don't know me? He said, sir, I don't know you. In the name of your reverend, in that church, church, church in the name of our reverend, not, he mentioned the name of the reverend. He said, yeah, you are right, sir. But I, I can't remember seeing the church. He said, I am always in the church every day. I see you. And he said, anyway, um, I'm just passing by, and I said, let me just check on you. I know how you're doing. So he gave me an envelope and left. And he gave you his name, too. And said, maybe when we see the next, next time in the church, then you can, you can check out for my name. And maybe I'll see you there. He got more than what he gave to that beggar. There was money in that envelope. You know why I'm sharing this with you? Till today, he hasn't been able to see that man in the church. He has asked everybody, everybody. He has been looking for that man. And then the boy who was telling that story, that happened just barely a year, about a year before he told me the story. God is still in the mission of disguising himself, disguising his his personality, his glory. He comes to taking, you know, human container so that we will not be able to 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 be in in, in crisis or, or to lose grip of you know worship. Sometimes God can come to you and you lose your sense of adoration. You get lost. <laughs> and so he choose to hide his glory so that he can be able to interact with us. <laughs> now remember that these angels, or permit me to say these three men, were on mission to Sodom and Gomorrah, to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But they stopped by in the house of Abraham. <laughs> Even though we didn't continue this story in chapter 19 and the 20 and so on and so forth to see what happened at Tom and Gomorrah, but the fact was that in the morning when these angels left and continued their journey, they were heading to Tom and Gomorrah, and they revealed to Abraham their mission. And Abraham started to intercede for the for the family of Lot. Now, when these angels came to Sodom and Gomorrah, the people were still seeing that is the the natives of Sodom and Gomorrah. They were still seeing them as human beings. The only thing that they saw that they were too handsome, and because they were evil mind, they had evil mind. The Bible said that they came to sleep with the men. Can you imagine? <laughs> well, that's the lesson for another day. But, dear friends in Christ, these three
women that stopped by the house of Abraham were August visitors. They were August to visit us. I don't know whether they came in the month of August that time, but what I know is that they were August to visit us. <laughs> Uh, hey, Jesus, they were August visitors, August visitors. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> Jesus, August is a word that signifies inspiring reverence, admiration of supreme dignity, of grandeur, majestic. That's what August means. So when you're saying that you had or you have an August visitor, it means this is not just a regular neighbor that just came. This is somebody whose visit will make you to cancel your job, will make you to forget your personal assignments and attend to them. And this was the situation that Abraham made. August visitors. These visitors, their visit changed the life of Abraham, changed the life of his family, took away their guarantee of shame, even saved the family of their close relative called Lot, living then at Sodom and Gomorrah. Their visit brought Isaac and a fulfillment of God's promises to the family. How would Abraham and Sarah forget the day that August visitors came to their home? <laughs> My dear friends in Christ, I am grateful to God that he gave us a month called August to remind us of August visitors. August is the eighth month of the year, which you know very well, and the eighth is symbolic of a new beginning. Eight. Symbolic of a new beginning. And I, if, if you look at the life of Abraham and Sarah, you saw that these people were already old. Their chapter of having children were already closed. Even Sarah was, when the angel said, that, told her that she was laughing and she was denying, you know what said in her heart? We're already old. How can we have a child at this old age? But the angels came, God came to tell them, look, this is not an issue of old age. This is an issue of new beginning. Thank God that the opposite of old is new. <laughs> that we have come here to bring to you a new beginning. We have come here to change the situation of the land. We have come here to give the family a new face. And you are talking of old age. Sometimes when God comes to do something for us, we are talking of the situation we are. We start to see things from the old wine. When the new wine is already available. How can you pour the new wine in the old wine skin? The new wine came to the family of Abraham. And they were still looking at things from, from the human faculty. From the from from human perspective, sometimes God wants to give us mighty blessing. We we'll start seeing the negative side or the other side of it. Oh, but I'm old. Oh, but I don't have the paper to work in this place. But God said, "This is where I want you to work." Oh, I don't have what it takes to marry this man. <laughs> Jesus. But when the angels visited them, when God visited them, when the elders in heaven visited them, they brought a new situation.
transaction in their life. They brought a new wine, a new testimony. The old things were turned turn away. The old garment was turned away. You no know, wonder the Bible says in Mark 15, verse 38, that when, on the cross, when Jesus had his last breath, hey, the temple veil was turned into two from top to bottom. That is recorded in the scripture. The garment of shame, that old garment, that thing that uh, business as usual, ancestral foundation spirits that have been holding the people to swear all these years, holding them to ransom all these years, and when new something is coming, you say, oh, it will be as business as usual. It will be business as usual. I am here to announce to you, come out from that old thinking. It is now time for a new thing to happen. I have come to give you a new name, says the Lord, a new beginning. So this is our month of new beginning. In this month, hey, God will give his people a new beginning of everything. A new beginning of joy. A new beginning of promotions and blessings. Even a new anointing. A fresh anointing. A fresh prayer life. Not to the one that Satan will cough. <laughs> You will run. You start calling brother away. <laughs> this time around, I am praying and asking God, give me the people that when the devil comes, he say, who are you? In the name of Jesus, run out. And they will run. Not every time Satan is chasing you. You are running. The Bible tells us, resist him. This is what I talk about the new wine. This is what's about the new month. So in this new month, I am asking God to give you a new mindset. Not old way of thinking, usual way of thinking. You see, Peter, he used his net and had been fishing all night as usual. He didn't catch anything. Business as usual until when Jesus came. Aha! I don't know whether that happened in the month of August. But there was a new beginning in his career. There was a new beginning in his life. Mm -hmm. A new beginning. No matter what has been happening, no matter the situation, there is always a new beginning when heaven comes to earth. The whole world was in darkness. And God sent his son to come. The moment Jesus came, there was a new beginning. <laughs> He started by preparing a virgin, immaculate lady, wonderful lady, and the God tabernacled in her, <laughs> preparing her. God wants to prepare her and then use her to usher in a new dispensation. The moment Jesus came to the ground, the moment he was born, the calendar system changed. We now have AD. <laughs> Jesus. He's coming and they valid the calendar. We have BC. We have AD. Because somebody came. A new beginning. A new calendar system. The thing we're talking about tonight is that these angels, this divine visitation is needed in your life. To change things that need to be changed. To change destiny that need to be changed. My dear friends in Christ, I do have a question. Do you want heavenly August visitor to visit you tonight? I have come to announce to you that there are August visitors coming to your house. I have come to announce to you that what happened to the life of Abraham is about to happen to you tonight in the name of Jesus. <laughs> it's in the case of Abraham. The, 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 the elders, the heavenly beings, they were on their journey to somewhere. But, you know, because it was night, Abraham sighted them in that cool of the evening and said, oh, Come, don't go to this journey. Come and eat so I get strength to go to the journey. That was already night. 
All right? In the story, it appeared as if Abraham was not where they were going to. As if the house was not where the intentional wanted to go to. That they were on a mission. And that was why even in the morning, they had to continue the journey from Abraham's house. But I tell you, they branched to his house to bless him. It was not an accident. <laughs> Maybe God is sent those angels to the city where you live to go and close an abortion clinic this night. But they will branch to your house and wipe your tears. <laughs> Their visit will change your family. Their visit will destroy the garment of shame in the family. Their visit will save the life of loved ones and close relatives that are related to you. Lot was a relative of Abraham. But you know what? The way Abraham intervened in the situation of the land, you know, remember that the three, uh, the three visitors now revealed to Abraham their mission to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And this man knew that, oh, I have Lord, my close relative living in that city. And he started to lobby, he started to intercede. Abraham was an intercessor. He was interceding. What of if I find 30 people? What of if I find 20 holy people? What of he continued to lobby until he saved them from that petition? I am asking God tonight, through this prayer of this night, every close relative or loved ones, may God Almighty use this prayer to touch them. Those who are on the way to perdition, those who are living the wrong life, those who are into wrong relationships, may the mercy of God save them tonight in the name of Jesus. Those that have given their life to drugs, I am praying that the God of Abraham, through this prayer, will save them tonight in the name of Jesus. Those that their lives are doped in alcohol, I am praying that God will touch them tonight in the name of Jesus. Whatever thing that I've taken over the life of my people, taking them to the land of darkness, taking them to the land of destruction. I am praying and calling upon the God of Abraham. May that God arise. May he save my people. May he save my people. In the name of Jesus, those that are not giving their life to Christ, Father, we are praying for them now. We are praying for their repentance in the name of Jesus. Father, the way you answer the prayers of Abraham, thereby saving the family of Lot. So we are praying, O oh God, the God of Abraham, may you arise, O oh God, and save your people. Father, arise and save my children. Father, arise and save my spouse in the name of Jesus. Every evil relationship that is causing mess in their lives, Father, through this prayer, we are asking you to deliver them in the name of Jesus. Those that are under the chains of the enemies, by the power of the Holy Ghost, let the chain be broken. Let the chain be broken. Let the chain be broken. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. That son, that son, that child that is on his way to the prison because of that ungodly relationship, because of that person that you go out with, I am praying the Spirit for you. I am praying for your deliverance tonight. In the name of Jesus, I pray tonight as an intercessor. I pray that the chain be broken. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the chain be broken. My Lord, come and save your people. My Lord, come and save your people. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, who will save your people if not you? Papa, the hour has come. Papa, rise. Holy Spirit, arise. Come 
It may be promotion. It may be marriage. That is your own Isaac. It may be healing. That is your own Isaac. What is important to use your own Isaac? And I want to tell you that the elders, the heavenly elders, the heavenly angels, they are here tonight to come and give you solution to that problem, an answer to that problem. Where will our help come from if not from them? <laughs> Did David not say in Psalm 1, 2, 4, verse 8, Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Huh? <laughs> the visit of the August visitors brought the fulfillment of God's promises in the family. May it be so in your life in the name of Jesus. Ah, somebody will not forget this prayer tonight. Ah, somebody will not forget the prayer tonight. Because this prayer is already opening the windows of heaven, the gate of heaven, for the August visitors to come to your family, and they do for you that which will give you joy. August visitors. <laughs> that is our prayer tonight. And that is the title of this prayer. Ah. <laughs> August visitors came. And that is the title of this talk. Tell me where heaven visited humanity and the things did not change. Tell me. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Bible talks about a man called John, St. John. In Revelation 1 to 5, a very beautiful story was there. And the Bible says that he was looking for someone who will open the scroll and read what is in the scroll. But he found no one. In heaven, no one. On earth, no one. Under the earth, no one. John became very, very disturbed. John became distressed. John started to, to weep. In Revelation chapter 5 verse 4 said, I wept and they wept. Remember, it, that word, W-E-P-T, was mentioned twice. He said, I wept and I wept. Many of us are weeping and weeping because of the situation ah, that is in the land. Because of the situation that you are passing through in the family. You wept and they, you wept. Night you are weeping. Day you are weeping. Now, it, John wept that way. Revelation 5 and 4 say, I wept and uh, I wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside it. No one. And so, as John was weeping, God sent an angel from heaven. God sent an elder. Do you know that there are elders in heaven? Revelation 4 verse 4 tells us there are 24 elders in heaven. One of the elders, just one. God didn't send two. He just sent one. He sent one elder to go and tell John in Revelation 5 verse 5. Johnny, cry no more. Whom? For the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, he has triumphed. He has conquered this problem. In fact, he is able to open the scroll. And they read what is inside. <laughs> the problem of John was, who will open the scroll and read what is inside? And the Bible made me to understand, while he was weeping on the situation on the land, that no one could solve that problem, God sent an elder. Just one. Just one elder will change your situation. One angel will send that situation. Just one. <laughs> uh, oh yeah even in the life of Abraham one was needed but there came as three heavenly beings mm. God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit visited him in human form ah Jesus I am praying for you you who have been weeping all this while May God in this August, may He visit you. Whoa. May He send the August visitors into your family to come and wipe your tears. Like He wiped the tears of John 
in the name of Jesus. I don't know who the Johnny pray line. Johnny cry no more. Johnny cry no more. For the Lord of the tribe of Judah, he has come. He has triumphed. He is able. He is able to open the school and read it. He is able to open the seven seals and read it. He is able to have a strategy for that problem, to give you solution. For when the strategy comes and meets this problem, the result is solution. May they come and give you that solution. In the name of Jesus. August visitors. <laughs> Psalm 42 verse 3 says, My tears have become my bread day and night, as I hear it say all day long, Where is your God? Is that the question people are asking you? The August visitors will take care of that. When our brother Daniel was in the fire, I mean in the last day, it was this same angel that came and closed the mouth of the lion. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fire, this same heavenly being came and turned the fire into a conditioner. Whenever heaven visits you, take note of this. Everything will change into your favor. The protocols will be broken. Protocols. <laughs> Even natural forces will have to change and do what God wants them to do at that point. For example, in the case of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the fire instead of burning them became a condition because of the divine visitation, because of the August visitor. The same thing in the life of Jacob. When he was on a journey at the time he slept in the land of Bethel, right there as he was sleeping, he encountered the angels, the heavenly community. The August visitors came to him. And you know what came out of his mouth? Oh, while he was wiping his eyes that morning. He said, oh, I didn't know that God is here. <laughs> I am praying for you. That so shall it be in your life tonight. That you will say, oh, I didn't know that God is a prayer line. Because of what he will do for you. In the name of Jesus. Something that will break protocol. Something that will change natural forces. Mm. Look at Abraham at old age. By clinical understanding of things, there's no way to explain why a woman at that age will be able to conceive. So by nature, is a foregone conclusion that she will not conceive. But when the August visitors came, that's the title of this talk, all right? The natural forces had to bow. <laughs> yes, Lord. It doesn't matter what is happening. It doesn't matter whether you have the qualifications or not. It is just for heaven to remember you. If heaven remembers you, that settles it. That what happened in the life of Jabez in First Chronicles chapter number four, verse nine to ten. Mm -hmm. A man who was living life in pains when the elders visited him, then large his coast. Life changed for him. That is why I'm saying that you are the next person in agenda. Somebody is in agenda. Are you the person? Jesus. I am praying on this month, the month of August, may the August visitors visit my life and enlarge my course in the name of Jesus. Let them enlarge my territory, enlarge my anointing, enlarge my ministry, enlarge my glory in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray now in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray now. Call upon the God of Jabez. Let him visit you this month, in this very month. Jesus. My coast shall enlarge in the name of Jesus. My womb shall enlarge because of the new conception in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I will be pregnant, pregnant of blessings, pregnant of testimonies in the name of Jesus. Heaven will visit me this month. Heaven will visit me this month. As they visited Abraham, so they will visit me to come and wipe my tears in the name of Jesus. They are coming with the bag of blessings in the name of Jesus. They are coming with Isaac in their hands in the name of Jesus. They are coming with Esther in their hands in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray now. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. My people pray now. Call upon Jesus. Let him enlarge your
your coast in this very month. My coast shall be enlarged in the name of Jesus. Ah, Jesus. Oh, I am still asking the same question I've been asking. Is it possible that heaven will visit somebody and life will remain the same? I have read the scripture. I have not found anyone. When God says, Angel, Gabriel, go and visit this person and give him or her this solution. Will things remain the same? Of course no. Look at the life of Abraham. A family of barrenness, just because the, the angels visited, because heaven visited, the August visitors came. From that day, it was no more called the family of barrenness. It became a family with the children. <laughs> Abraham gave birth, now had Isaac. Isaac now started having his own children. <sighs> there is a blessing that will attract other blessings in your family. You need that kind of blessing tonight. Contagious blessings. Serial blessings. If you divide one by three, one over three, it will be 0 0.3333. That thing will never have an end. I am praying that what will happen tonight will bring unending blessings in your life, unending desma point, unending spiritual point in your life. May God begin to touch you in a special way. As he visited Abraham, and from that day he gave him a seed called Isaac. From that Isaac, all that children of Israel started to come in. From that Isaac, Israel came in. From that Isaac, we, all of us came in. Oh, my sherry bush in the <laughs> Jesus. We are calling on him tonight. He who is able to change our shame. Look at in Luke 1, verse 26 to 56. We see a beautiful story of how an angel called Angel Gabriel visited a young Jewish girl. Called Mary. <laughs> Just the angel visited her. Before the angel left, Piam, Mary could no more be an ordinary person henceforth. She became a mother of God. A title that no human being will ever have. I have a creator. Jesus, or God the Father, to be more exact. But Mary gave birth to, to the Creator, the woman that gave birth to God. What an honor. But that is true because an angel came. That is true because heaven came. Not minding that she was a virgin. But you know what? Natural forces have to stand still. And the protocol has to be broken. When heaven comes and visits somebody. So even in the life of Mary, you see the protocol being suspended, being broken. So that a virgin will conceive and bear a son. My dear brothers and sisters, you have heard the stories of the angels visiting people. Heaven visiting earth, visiting families. How about your life? How about your life? <laughs> I am praying tonight, in this month of August, in this month of August visitation, may God Almighty bring into my family an unbundled new beginnings of blessings into my family. In the name of Jesus, may He bring splendid fulfillment into the family. In the name of Jesus, every power of darkness that wants to stand against the new thing that will happen in my family this month, may the fire of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the fire of Hebrew 12 and 29, who is a consuming fire, may he paralyze and destroy every power of the devil against us this month, every power of the devil that wants to stand at the gate of this month to capture and imprison the angels bringing my blessings 
through this prayer, may the fire of Jesus destroy every hand of the devil that wants to take away my blessing this month. In the name of Jesus, in this very month, I receive grace and favor. In this very month, I receive spiritual evil in my family. In this very month, the water of life of John 4, verse 13 to 14 will visit me. The living water. In this month, I will drink good life. In this month, I will drink the water of life. In this month, I will drink from Jesus. In this month, uh, my well shall not run dry. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Every conspiracy in the demonic kingdom against my life this month, I command them to scatter. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Every power of darkness blocking blessings from reaching me this month, let them burn by fire. In the name of Jesus. Let the angels of God clear my way this month. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, every power that wants to bring problems into my life this month, I command you now, in the name of Jesus, burn by fire. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, in this very month, protocols shall be broken in my life. In the name of Jesus. Something that will make me to get favor, not following the normal protocol, because of favor. It will happen to me. It happened in the life of Shadrach, Kimishaka, and Abednego. When by protocol, the fire was supposed to burn them and destroy them and turn them to ashes. But the protocol was suspended and they were praising God in the fire. So shall protocol be broken in my life this month. And I will praise God. We are the enemies that are waiting for me to fall. I will be outstanding in the name of Jesus. Fire of God, insulate me this month, encircle me this month, in the name of Jesus, in this very month, let the circle, the ring of the blood of Jesus, the circle of the blood of Jesus, insulate me and my family, in the name of Jesus, yes my Lord, in this very month, I will eat and drink with divine August visitors, in the name of Jesus, yes my Lord, Jesus, in this month, I will move, make progress in the name of Jesus. Every part of the devil that wants to put me down, that wants to pull me down, in the name of Jesus, they will not pull me down. I reject every syndrome or pull him down. Every demonic pull him down spirit. I command them to destroy it. In the name of Jesus, every chain holding down my spiritual progress, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom I serve, I command you now to begin to break. I command you to break down. Oh, yeah, Rabo, Sherry, Baba, Break down, break down. In the name of Jesus. Aha! Jesus. Every spiritual stagnation. In the name of Jesus. Expire. Expire. You cannot be activated this month. Because this is my month. This is my month. My month to move forward. Yes, my Lord. When the divine visitors visited the life of Abraham, he is ready to move forward. The womb of Sarah that was not moving forward, started to move forward. Yes, my Lord. So it shall be in this month that I will begin to move forward. Every wall of Jericho put him in the spiritual prison. If I be a servant of God, I command you now, begin to melt down. Be in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Any of my children that are in a prison of life, I'm a sherry boring carry baba. In this month of August, I declare through the intercession of August visitors, come out. Aha. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus. I start against every blessing fire of the enemy. I cancel them now, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, this month, this month, I call upon the Holy Spirit to deposit wonders in my life. Deposit wonders in my life. My name shall be wonderful, in the name of Jesus. Something that will make people to see me and say wonderful, it will happen to me this month, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, 
wonderful. That is my new identity. Because the wonderful heavenly community, they are coming to make me wonderful. They are coming to visit me. In Judges chapter 13 verse 18, the Bible says, my name is wonderful. Wonderful is a compound word composed of wonder and the fool. And when the wonderful God visits somebody, your life will be full of wonders. Wonderful equals to full of wonders. Hey, Jesus, when the wonderful all God's visitors visit me and they have visited me, my life will become full of wonders in the name of Jesus. Therefore, in my life, I reject sickness. I reject intimidation. I reject setbacks. I reject stagnation. It's time to move forward. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Every darkness within me. Ah! I command you now. In the name of Jesus. Vanish. Ah! Vanish. In the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The power of God is moving. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Every secret meeting that have been set up against my life and destiny this month, let them scatter. Let them scatter. The yoke of evil spirits shall not reign in my life this month. You shall not reign in my touch. Spirit of manipulation. Manipulation spirits. I command you now, burn by fire. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. I ask the Holy Spirit at this hour to make this month a month of transformation for me. Let the Holy Spirit Fall upon somebody in the name of Jesus. As he fell upon me, let him touch me this month in the name of Jesus. Jesus, touch me, Lord. In this very month, let the Holy Spirit rearrange my life by fire. Rearrange my life by fire. Oh, my dear people of God, when the August visitors came to the family of Abraham and Sarah, their lives were rearranged. <laughs> Things changed because heaven has come to rearrange their life. I don't know whether this is what you want in your life. And I'm asking God tonight, let him rearrange your life by fire. Uh -huh. Let him bring a fresh fire into you for a new beginning. In the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And as you have come to rearrange your life, every power that wants to challenge this new agenda, may the consuming fire of Hebrews 12 and 29 melt them like wax before the fire. In the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Yes, my Lord. And so, ah, may the power of God protect us, and the medicine power of Jesus destroy every satanic oppression that have been set up this month against me and my family. I cancel them now. I cancel them now. In the name of Jesus. I declare them cancelled. In the name of Jesus. I declare them cancelled. Something extraordinary shall happen in my life this month. Unprecedented greatness will happen in my life this month. Unmatchable increase we have in my life this month. I will become unstoppable in this very month. I will become unthinkable in this very month. In fact, my name is testimony this month. In the name of Jesus. Holy Father, we thank you. Mighty Jesus. Thank you, Ancient of Days. Thank you, King of Kings, for the wonders you have done. We give you all the glory. We give you all the worship. And we give you all the adoration. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, I just want to quickly tell you congratulations that you have prepared to harvest your blessings this month. May God that we serve, the God of hearts of Jesus, and many ministries. That God I created heaven and earth, may He bless you and keep you firm. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Amen.